today we're going to work on the bass notes drum. Uh, these are progressive lessons introducing the bass, bass notes drum technique, and then I'm going to end up with a song putting it all together. What, 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 what I, the example I just did for you uh, with a moving melody bass line. So to start, what is the bass notes drum? Well, uh, instead of just strumming a chord like we do, we're going to hit the bass note of the chord and then strum the rest of the chord, just like it sounds. The bass note and then strum. Okay, so here you go on an A minor chord. Example one is just. And then you just simply go to a C chord. So again, if this is too simple for you, you can skip to page three. Or if you just want to work through progressively, that was my idea with this example. Now, number two, we're going to use the bass note strum idea, but with an alternating bass, meaning I'm going to play this. bass players usually take that part. Uh, when, what you're actually hitting is the root note of the chord and then the fifth of the chord. And what does that mean? Well, chords are based, um, built on three notes, what's called the root and the third and the fifth. If you look at the white keys on a piano and you played um, C, middle C with your pinky, and then played the next uh, note would be a D, and then the next would be an E, and then an F, and then a G. Well, if you pick out uh, the C and then skip and then play the E and then skip and play the G, you've got the root third note above the root, and then the fifth note above the root, root, third, fifth, and then you can stack your chords like that and move your hand up the, up the keyboard, and that's how chords are based. This is a very general <laughs> um, explanation, but just so you understand. Now, the fifth would be a G above the C. So, if I play a C chord, I could play this G right here, or I could play this low G down here. So, every other time, I do this. probably heard that sound before. And on A minor, the fifth above A is an E. So I'll go down to the low E. Now, if you don't want to worry about the theoretical part of it, just read the music or the tabs and just play along. But some people like to understand theoretically what's happening. So when you see that um, uh, uh, alternating bass is what that's called. You, you play the root and then the fifth. You can play the fifth above or the fifth below, but that's kind of like a real standard kind of a way to do it. If that's too hard, you just stay with the root. But later on, you want to go... And if you speed these up, you'll see how they sound more like music. Practice them slow four times for each example. I numbered them, number one, two, three, four, all the way up to seven, I believe. Um, now, number three, A minor to C again, but this time on beats two and four, instead of just doing a down stroke, we're going to add a down up, so it's going to sound like this. So, still the bass note, the strum idea, but now the strum, more interesting with that up stroke. Four, you guessed it, we're going to do that again, but then we're going to add the, the alternating bass in. So now you've got a combination of everything that we just did like this. Okay, so that's kind of like the first half there. Number five, what I'm going to do now is introduce what's called the hammer-on. And we've maybe done this before, or you've seen people do this. Um, what I'm going to do is hit the hammer-on note with an open D. I'm going to still hold the A minor chord, but I'm going to release my second finger. I'm going to hit the open D and then hammer-on the E note back into the A minor shape like this. So you see I hit the open D and I slam my finger down. And I want to do that in rhythm because it's eighth notes. It looks like eighth notes. It's not a slur. It's an in-time hammer-on. For instance... So a little 
faster. Okay, that's number five. So what we're doing is still the bass note strum idea, but you're going to add in what's called a hammer on, and you lift up the second finger, hammer on that note. Um, I chose that note because it's a it's an E, and um, it's the fifth of the A chord. You know, we did before. now this time you're going to say, well, Doug, that's not a G. You still have to play the G. Well, this is an E. You're right. It's the third of the C chord. But I like that because it sounds exactly the same as what I was doing the A minor chord. So, you know, you can pick your battles. As long as it's a chord tone, you can kind of use it, and that's what I'm taking the liberties of doing here. Now, number six, what we're going to do is the bass note alternating strum with, with the root and the fifth, with the hammer on in there, for instance. So I've got the alternating bass note, there's the the fifth below, now the hammer on, now the alternating fifth below, hammer on. Pretty cool. Then the last one, number seven, everything's the same except on beats two and four, we're going to do the down up which is the 8th note strum, so we added everything together like this. Okay, so there's number seven, and try to keep better rhythm than that, actually, put it metronome on. <laughs> okay, so um, many of the faults with guitar books that I've found to date, they would do that, and they'd say, there you go. Well, then they would skip the very next part, which is putting it all together. You have to have a song. That's why, I mean, fingers on the frets here, um, you'll notice that there's tons of song examples. Putting these techniques that I'm showing you into song practice, usually it's a song you've heard of, and it's my interpretation of that. Um, this one is... is, is uh, kind of like Ghost Riders in the Sky, the old song, but I kind of just morphed it into a putting it all together, moving bass note melody idea. So here we go. i um, going to go real slow. This is a song example. It's measure 29, page 3 on the PDF, or if you're watching your GP6 file. It sounds like this. Now, you can see how you can use this song structure. I'm sorry. This one started talking to all this at once. I'm going to go back to that A minor chord and show you. Okay, uh, measure 37. When you hold the, hit, hold the A minor chord there, what we're going to do is play the A here. And that's because the melody of the song went up a little higher. So what I did was... So you want to hear... Da, 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 da. And so that one's a little more tricky to play. Still the bass note strum idea. At that point, it doesn't become the bass note, it just becomes a melody note. But, so I've kind of morphed this into a uh, moving bass and melody kind of example. But um, I really felt that this was a great little song with a memorable melody and a way to show you how to put it all together. So what I'm going to do is, is play this together for you, and I'm going to count it in, and you can play along with me. And I'm not going to talk, so I won't mess up here. <laughs> One, two, ready, go.
Okay, so that's putting it all together with uh, you know, hitting the bass and then this drum. So I hope you like this example. Um, what I'm trying to do is just progressively get you into more intricate playing. Instead of just strumming all the time or just picking one note at a time, we, we want to we move it into playing chord melody. So notes and then strum and back and forth and eventually start the finger pick. And you'll see that later on in the, in the website if you want to go to the finger picking side. But this is the bass note strum. Progressive lesson uh, introducing the bass note strum technique <laughs> and then putting it all together at the end. I hope you like the example and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.